and wax beans. And, and squash. From the garden. Yep. Potatoes from the garden. Carrots from the garden. So 13 years of gardening, 12 years of rototilling and amending the soil, um, just really poor production, really short growing season here, um, mostly just because of the elevation and we're at 7,500 feet and you can see the soil and what it grows around here, it's just Chico and um, it's just this high desert. Uh, the growing season is very short. It'll freeze up to June 15th, so we have between June 15th and roughly mid-September or late September to grow stuff, so just over three months. So it's a very short growing season. It's been really frustrating. Um, this year, finally, we have changed what we did. Last year, we brought in a bunch of wood chips, laid down about a foot of wood chips, and on top of that, put a layer of manure last fall and just let it sit over winter. Didn't bother tilling anymore, just did that. And <clears throat> this is the best our garden has ever looked, ever. And it's been the most productive it's ever been. And what percent would you say for production over the years in the past? How much, what percent is better? What percent better is it? 80 80% better production. So we'd plant and grow and plant and grow and sometimes plants would grow, sometimes they get killed by the hail, sometimes they get killed by um, chipmunks, sometimes bugs. But uh, even when that didn't happen, the production was very, very sparse. Um, even when we could get a few small things to grow and most things wouldn't grow. Um, peas wouldn't grow or they'd grow for like three weeks and they'd become plants and then they just kind of disappear. And that happened with several things. So, but now this year, uh, the wood chips, the manure on top, and we just left it. And then Don would trench rows, plant seeds in the dirt, and just leave the wood chips to the sides when things started growing and growing up through the um, out of the soil. She'd push wood chips around it, and then they just kept growing up and kept covering them with wood chips so that now it stays fairly moist. We don't have to water very often. It's good because we only get eight inches of rain a year here, eight inches of rain a year, which is not much at all. Um, but the wood chips keep the moisture in. Um, they do a good job of that. The other thing the wood chips do, though, is if you've watched some other videos on back to and gardening, it may pull the nitrogen out of the soil. Um, we're just replacing it. We just put this human, you know, this heavy layer of manure over the top, and maybe it is pulling the nitrogen out of the soil. I don't know, but we haven't been able to get things to grow anything close to what we have this year in the past. So we're going to figure that out. We're just going to have to figure out how to replace the nitrogen because this is this is the best production we've ever had. 80% better production over the year. Um, she's picking peas how often? Every three days? Every two days. Every two days she's having to pick peas because they're just growing that fast. And so you picked peas a couple days ago already? I picked peas two days ago and I need to pick again already. And these pea plants never grew past a couple feet in the in the past. Now that we've put wood chips and cow manure down and that's all we've done, they just grow like crazy. And these things are taller than I am, so they're about six feet tall, this tallest plant is. And, and we had this amazing dinner. I need salt. I need more salt. What am I looking here, Dawn? Green beans. And wax beans. And squash. From the garden? Yep. Potatoes from the garden. Carrots from the garden. Uh-huh. What else is in there? Onions from the onions, garden? Onions, but they aren't from the garden. Oh, the onions are not from the garden. This is the kurabi, Indeed. which I didn't know about until we watched Eric and Ariel eat it on Simple Living Alaska. Is that right? Yep. And it's actually pretty good. And the beets are from the garden? Yes. Yum. So she just picked all the peas two days ago, and now there's just a bunch of peas on. Again, some of these were kind of small then, but they're ready to pick again. Tomatoes aren't doing so well just because it's getting so cold. It's high desert here in Colorado, and so it gets down to the 40s at night, and the tomatoes just don't do that well when it gets that cold. Of course, they do really good in our four-season greenhouse. Um, even in the dead of winter when it's minus 30, they're still growing in there. So if you haven't watched my videos on that, they're on the same channel. So this is all peas over here as well? 
and asparagus. And I recognize this as a tomato plant. This hasn't produced yet, or has it produced? And no, it hasn't produced yet. It hasn't produced yet. It has, it's flowering. It's getting ready to produce. And it's late August, so it might or might not. Yeah. In these tires, you can see there's no wood chips in here, but this is garlic, you said? Garlic, uh-huh. Cucumbers. And cucumbers. Onions. And these little kind of raised beds, same thing. We just put wood chips in the top, cow manure on top, and the onions are just growing like crazy. So, and what else is over here? Pepper. This is bell peppers. Mm -hmm. And nice pepper there. There's a couple peppers there. Cool. More squash, patty pan squash. Okay. They both have patty oh, pans yeah. on them. Cabbage. Look how big that cabbage head is. So good. The zucchini, I picked all the zucchini off of it, so it's just starting again. Oh, yeah, we had there's zucchini. There's a couple, there's one right there. And here you just planted a bunch of... I planted um, carrots and beets here for fall. You just move the wood chips right out of the way and get you right down to the... This is all asparagus. Along the edge. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Berries. And, the and the crazy thing about the berries, the berries like very acidic soil or more acidic soil than what we have here. Our soil here is super alkaline. It's very, very alkaline. pH high sevens, uh, lower eights, and um, you just can't amend it enough to make it acidic. That's what the state studies have shown in these alkaline, super alkaline soil areas. But this is a, this is why this is working. I have no idea because we haven't amended the soil enough to make it acidic. All we've done is put wood chips down and put manure on top and they're growing like crazy. And we've tried to grow these in the past and they have not grown these berries, blackberries and what? Raspberries and blueberries. Okay. And here's the pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Asparagus. And asparagus, of course. And he planted green beans on this side over here. Uh -huh. Against that. And these haven't produced yet, have they? Yes, they have. Oh, they have? Uh -huh. Okay. These are raspberries. There's a blackberry bush at the end. And we started getting some volunteer... Um, raspberries picking up. When will these produce? Well, we may not see anything until next year. Because this is the first year. This is the first year they've really grown. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've gotten some tomatoes out of the garden, but not much. Do these mushrooms just grow here? Yes. I think it's from the um, cow manure that was there. Okay. So. Okay. And then here, let's get perspective again. Here we have all onions. These first two rows. These next two rows are all potatoes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cauliflower, more um, cabbage, more onions, more cabbage, cauliflower, beets, I just planted an extra row there of um, carrots, these are spaghetti This is squash. carrots that you just planted. Yeah, this is all spaghetti squash. Yeah. 
It's doing quite well. We'll have a lot of spaghetti squash. Hope you like spaghetti squash. Up here the against the fence are all red potatoes. Potatoes. And then pinto beans, carrots. Pinto beans right here. Mm -hmm. Carrots there, obviously. That I can recognize. And then green beans. And wax beans. So these two rows are green beans? Yeah. And the wax beans have the purple flower, you said? Right. And the green beans have the white flower? And there we'll be ready to pick again green beans and such. See? Oh, yeah. These are the yellow beans. And so you just picked these two days ago, was it also on Sunday? Yes. These are jade green beans, and so they get quite large. So they'll be ready by Friday right. to pick. And there's another zucchini over here. Another pumpkin over there. Pumpkin there. Big zucchini there. And the sunflower, of course. That's a volunteer. <laughs> so, you know, 12 years of trying to garden here, and our production was just really poor. Um, the plants didn't grow well. Um, broccoli grew well one year, didn't it? Like one year, and then we couldn't get it to grow again for, for whatever we tried. And it was really, really good broccoli. The plants did really well. They produced a lot. And that was the only crop we could get out of it. We planted a bunch of other stuff and nothing else really grew or produced. So it has not been a productive area until we put the wood chips down and then put the cow manure on top. So this is what we're going to keep doing because this is what's working. So this winter, um, when everything dies off, we're going to put another layer of uh, maybe wood chips if they're getting kind of thin, but most likely we'll just put another layer of cow manure on top and just let that sit over winter, just let that soak in. And, you know, you can see when you dig back here, if when we, when, oh, thanks. When we just had a, uh, you know, bare garden here with bare soil, um, it would dry out within a day. It would be this hard, rock hard crust on top that just even if we amended it and put all the things in it that we were supposed to put in it it was just would still turn to this like concrete on top and um so we had to water all the time just to keep it moist now we're not watering it hardly at all and you can see of course it did just rain but that's the dirt down inside that's super moist and you can just see how brown and rich it is here and that's just because it's staying moist these wood chips are keeping it moist down inside there So, and you can see even the cow manure, um, we had, when we put the cow manure down, we had big cow chips and we had, you know, kind of powdery cow manure and we just put it in and left it in like it was with the big cow chips and big chunks and left them like that. That way they kind of broke down over time. And, um, now we have little kind of pieces like this. That's all that's left. But never from the garden. So we were just saying that in the 12 years of gardening here, um, before this year, my wife's never had enough production of anything to can whatever it does produce is very little and we eat it right away and it's gone so this is the first year that we're going to have to be preserving things which is kind of cool now the four season greenhouse that we do get a lot of things out of this greenhouse right here if you watch any of those videos on my channel um it grows stuff year round even when it's minus 20 minus 30 for a low outside in the winter here things are still growing they're still green in there so that's pretty cool so we can still grow things in there we don't have a big growing area so be able to, to be able to grow things out here and then to harvest it and then uh, be able to can it or store it for winter somehow um, this is very cool this is very exciting we've got Paul Gauchi to thank you know his his late life's work obviously has been in trying to promote um, back to Eden Gardening, and uh, we're benefiting from it, so I want to thank him for that. And here's the basket of stuff Don just harvested today. I don't know what all's in here, but... Some nice carrots, potatoes, beets, carrots, red potatoes. Nice, there's a few of them over there in there. The green beans on the bottom. These are jade green beans. Tons of those, as you can see. And then lots of peas. Peas are on the other side over here. Peas are on the other side. Oh, there's some uh, wax beans too. Wax. Oh, look at all the peas down there. 
Rex beans, sugar snap peas, and snow peas. Well, and that's just what you pulled out today. Oh, yeah, I was really just thinning. So I thinned so that the carrots would grow, or the smaller ones would grow more. Look at that. This is going to be great for soup this fall. Or even tonight. Did you pick all the green beans? I picked all the green beans. And this was real simple. We haven't done anything extraordinary. Miracle Grow, none of that kind of stuff. This is a layer of wood chips on top of dry soil that we let sit over winter. We spread manure on top and just let it sit over winter. And it was a lot of manure. It was a solid layer of manure we put on top. And we were worried it would be too much. It might burn it. Hoping that leaving it sit over winter would be um, okay. That uh, it would take most of that shock out of it when we planted plants in the spring. And they've done just fine. They eat the grub thing, but they didn't eat the caterpillar. So I figured it was too much. All right, so this is a success story for us. 12 years of trying to garden in here, very poor production, very poor plant growth. And uh, finally we decided to pull the trigger on doing the wood chip garden thing like Paul Gatchi does in Washington State and uh, back to eating gardening. And um, you know, there are some, there may be some negative things to say about back to eating gardening, but the results here in our environment, at least we cannot argue with. Okay, this is 80% this is better production and 80% better growth than any year we've had in the past. And that's hundreds of hours of rototilling and meaning the soil, putting all kinds of stuff in the soil, trying to make it work and still having very poor production, very poor growth. And so when last year we decided we're going to put wood chips down, forget everything. We just cleaned out all the weeds, um, cleaned out all the plants, put wood chips down, put a layer of cow manure on top last fall, just left it over winter. And the spring came out and started just making little rows down to the soil, planted little seeds in, just barely covering them up with a little bit of dirt, letting the seeds grow, letting the plants come up, pull the wood chips over as they start to grow higher and higher and higher. So pretty soon the wood chips are flat across here. And uh, it's done amazing as far as we're concerned. The production we're getting out of this garden is just way, way, way better. And so does it deplete nitrogen? Do the wood chips deplete nitrogen from the soil? Probably. And I've seen some really good, well done YouTube videos on um, nitrogen studies where they've tested the nitrogen soil, the nitrogen in the soil outside the garden where they're doing regular gardening and inside the, um, underneath the wood chips where the wood chips have been there for some time. And there is less nitrogen in there, but can't you just replace the nitrogen? I mean, that's what, that's what our plan is. And even if that's the case, we're not going to let low ni nitrogen dissuade us because this is the best production we've ever had. You can't, we can't argue with results here, at least in our environment. So <clears throat> this has done wonders for us. We're thankful to Paul Gauchi and his efforts to um, promote back to Eden gardening and um, using wood chips. And it's just been so much less labor too. It's crazy how we don't, we don't do anything now. We're just like making little rows and you really don't have to make rows. If you're going to, if you have a plant, you're going to plant, you just kind of dig it back, dig a hole in the soil, put your plant in, cover it, cover it up with wood chips and pretty much leave it. As far as watering goes, it's even less. And when we're seeing mushrooms grow here, just like it does in the forest where you have really rich, good soil in the forest and mushrooms growing here, that's a good sign as well. Then the other big advantage of course is when you go to weed, how easy the weeds are to pull. So, I mean, if this was hard, dry, crusted soil, that would have just broken off. And then a week later, the weed would be growing again. You know, it would be coming up again. Because I wouldn't have been able to get the root out. Look at that root. That's almost like a carrot. So, pulling weeds just makes it a hundred times easier. You're going to have weeds. At least we're going to have weeds. Um, no matter what. Whether we have wood chips in here or whether we don't have wood chips in here. And even these stickery weeds look at that big root so that's probably not going to come back this year by the time winter by the time it starts freezing um, the wood chips do tend to suppress a lot of the weeds that grow uh, a big wood chip layer is going to keep things from growing up very easily through them so it does suppress a lot of the weed growth that might happen otherwise
So again, it saved us tons of labor, saves us a lot of water, it saved us a lot of work, and it's produced more. You know, right now we just can't we can't argue we can't argue with this. We're going to do this again next year. You know, this fall again, we're going to come back and we're going to put down maybe some more wood chips if our wood chip layer is getting too compacted, um, getting too shallow. And then we're going to put another layer of cow manure over the top and just leave it over winter, let it sit, and then come back and replant in the spring. We're going to do another video on this next year and see if we get the same results or and hopefully even better results. Okay, hope this helps you guys if you're thinking about making the plunge into wood chip gardening. At least in our environment, it's made all the difference for us and we're super happy with it. Um, and, uh, if you're thinking about making the plunge, um, give it a try if you, especially if you're struggling with getting things to grow like we were in the past. Yeah, we just can't argue with the results here.